Hi, my name is Rebecca and I'm the product manager for the VSEC controllers. I want to give you an overview on what we have been working on lately. Our controller family grows, so first of all, I want to present to you our newest controller, the VSEC single board. It is a plug-on board that contains all the intelligence required for smart charging and is perfect for building an integrated solution, for example, for DC wall boxes, since it manages one charge point. We are now going into serious production, so make sure to place your orders fast. The next evolution stage will be the VSEC single controller, which is a turnkey solution that can be mounted plug and play on a DIN rail in charging stations. It comprises the same functionality, the same software features as the VSEC single board. In general, we have developed our software in a way that it can be used on all our VSEC controllers. So you will always benefit the same way from our releases, no matter if you are using the VSEC, the VSEC single board or the VSEC single controller. And now I want to show you what features we've been working on in the last six months. Some of you might still be in the development phase of your charging station. Some are already building up charging stations all around the world and are therefore solving the problem of the lack of charging infrastructure. The good news is we have been developing features that all of you will benefit from. In my first video, I will explain the product features. In a second video, I will give more insights into the features that will help you tremendously while developing your charging stations. So here you can see the current specification. First, I want to show you the new product features. When the available power for charging changes over time, charging schedules are advertised to the connected EV. The schedules contain how much power is available at a certain time. These schedules can either be set to statically contain the maximum power of the power electronics, or they can be computed from charging profiles that are provided by a charging station management system via the OSPP interface. When the VSEC controller receives a new default or transaction specific charging schedule from the CSMS, the VSEC controller triggers a renegotiation of the charging parameters with the vehicle. Moreover, an EV with ISO 15118 support can request a charging pause, which gives the opportunity for power saving. This is often the case if a charging schedule contains periods with zero watts scheduled power. During a pause, the communication is reduced to a minimum by terminating the high-level communication session completely. The vehicle may decide to turn off the PLC device too. And then later on, the charging can be restarted according to the charging schedule. Other than conductive charging, the VSEC now also supports pantograph charging. You can either use a roof-mounted pantograph or an inverted pantograph. For the inverted pantograph, the communication to the vehicle happens via a wireless access point, and then the upcharge communication protocol is used. The authorization of a charging process can be done with various methods, one of which is an RFID reader. The VSEC now supports authorizing a transaction using RFID tokens. At this moment, two RFID readers are supported by the VSEC controllers. These are the MCRN2 of Minova and the TWN4 Multitech of Elatech. Both readers support RS232. And the good thing is you only need one reader for two connectors. How is this done? To start the authorization sequence, the driver must present the token at the RFID reader. From this moment on, the token is considered as pending. The driver must then connect the vehicle at one of the available EVSEs within a certain timeout, which can be set within the web interface. This I will show you in my second video. If no EV gets connected within the timeout, the pending token is discarded. As soon as the vehicle gets connected, an authorization request is sent to the CSMS using the pending token. Once authorized by the CSMS, the charging can start. Additionally, the transaction can also be stopped by presenting the same RFID token which started the transaction. To stop 
the charging, there are also further methods available. The charging can be stopped from the charging station management system via an OSPP message. It can be stopped from power electronics via a power electronics protocol message or directly at the charging station if you have placed a button there. This can also be used for stopping. Finally, since the VSEC has two outlets, it can also control two power electronics. So far, this was only available via WebSocket. Now it is also possible to control two power electronics via CAN. Moreover, the CAN IDs are configurable and you can define the baud rate in the web interface. In my next video, I will show you how to enable these features in the web interface and explain you the features that are helping you in your internal development. If you have any questions, feel free to contact us anytime.